Hey guys, welcome to my video on counters. Now, I don't think there's any... Well, actually, there's not too many true counters to every comp. They're just comps that could do very well against you. But even if you are a counter, it sometimes will lose because you're just not as strong as your opponent. Like, just to give an example, say you're 600s, but you're all two-starred, but the feathered comp has like three-star assassins, three-star uh, front lines. You still will probably lose that. But you generally, I'm trying to just give you guys a general idea what what works well against every. Now, I made a slide for almost every popular comp right now, and we'll just go over each one, the pros and cons of that comp, and then what counters them. So first off, here we got nine warriors. Now, <clears throat> nine warriors are really tanky. Nine warrior bonus gives you a lot of armor. It's like 22 armor or more, something like that, and it does really good against physical damage comps. So against like assassins, hunters, they do very very well. The only issue with 9 warriors is that A, they have to hit level 9 to get 9 warriors. They lack too much CC because all they really have is Pirate Captain. And then they have no magic damage because they're most, of course, they're, they're more physical damage. Like the only magic damage I can think of is Pirate Captain, really. Yeah, just Pirate Captain. Now, the counters to 9 warriors would be mages because the warrior bonus just gives you armor. You're still very susceptible to magic damage. Um, the other thing is 6 goblins. Six Goblins does well because A, Six Goblins are very tanky, so it's hard for the Warriors to kill them. They do a lot of damage, and that's pretty much it. It's really just the tankiness. Like, the Warriors just are going to have so much trouble killing these Goblins. And then they also usually get Warlock bonus, so even more chance you're probably not killing them. Um, the other thing that does very well against Nine Warriors is Dark Spirit and Spirit bonus. Now, Dark Spirit does percent damage, so... She just goes right through, like, she doesn't even care about your armor. She just goes right through that HP that you have. And then Spirit Bonus stuns people whenever they get auto-attacked. And since most of the warriors auto-attack, if they have four spirits on their team, you're just going to constantly get stunned and die. Little by little, you're just going to die. Not much you can really do about that. Now, next one we have up is uh, Beast Warrior. Very popular comp right now. Probably one of the strongest comps. It's consistent. It's strong in all, all stages of the game, early, mid, late, they're always strong. And it can also change up the comp drastically, like you could give up the 4 beast bonus for marine bonus, you can add CC, so it has a lot of variation in the comp. The only real con of the comp is that it needs 4 costs. So like, you need things like Doom, PCAP, Berserker, Siren, all these units are 4 costs, and to get them all to 2 star is very hard. So that really drags the comp down if you can't hit them near the mid to late game. As for counters, again we have the six goblins, for the same reason as the last one, six goblins are just so tanky, they can just soak all that damage, and if they have warlock bonus, you're not killing them. Feather does pretty well too, because of the dodge mechanic. So if you're very strong as Beast Warrior, you can potentially beat Feathered, because Swordsman, Swordsman is magic damage, so he doesn't really get dodged, and if you get the... I think it was called the Oblivion Staff, which goes through feathered dodges, then you can easily beat them. So it really just depends on whether you have certain items and how strong you are. And also God Mage. God Mage just destroys Beast Warrior. There's nothing they can do. They just die. If, as long as they have God of Thunder, their skills come up too fast and they just do way too much damage for you to ever kill them. Luckily, most of the comps that beat you are late, very late game. So most of the time, you're not going to get countered and you're going to have a good time playing Beast Warrior. Alright, next up, we got God Mages. Now, God Mages are the strongest late game of all. Especially once they hit God Thunder, it's pretty much over. They're going to win. Um, the cooldowns are very low because of how Divinity Bonus works. And, yeah, they can just... It, it, as soon as a God Comp hits God Thunder, you're pretty much dead. It's, it, it sucks, but it's just how it is. Um, the only issue is they're very weak early to mid while they don't have God of Thunder, so best chance is to try everyone trying to kill them before they get to that late game comp. Um, there's no like pure counter really to God Mage. Six Mages does very well, um, especially if they're Storm Shaman. With six Mages, it really ends up being who who's Storm Shaman has more mana items. So whoever Storm Shaman goes off first will probably be the winner of that fight. Uh, you could try spreading as a God Mage because a lot of your abilities don't really need to be targeted that fast. So that's one way to beat them. Um, the other one is Assassins with Claw Wand. Claw Wand makes you not get crowd controlled or take magic damage. So if they have a Shadow Crawler 3, a Claw Wand, and a lot of damage items, they have a potential to kill you really fast before you can even 
shut them down. So that's like the only real counters they. But they're not really true counters. It's just something that does very well against God Mage. Um, next up we have Feathered. Feathered's strong because they dodge auto attacks. That's what the Feathered bonus does. They also have a lot of variation. Like they can go Feathered Hunter, Feathered War, uh, Feathered Assassin. They can even do both Feathered Hunter and Assassin. They're very beefy. And they have a lot of effective HP because of well dodging. So the more armor they stack, the more health they stack on tanks, the much stronger they become and the way tankier they become. The problem with the comp is that it's very expensive. But generally, you want to lose streak or open fort into it, so you have lots of gold mid game and you can roll for the comp. I actually have a how to play feathered video if you want to check out my earlier videos that can give you a good uh, a good view into how to play this comp. Now the counters to this comp is uh, 6 hunters because the hunter bonus lets you pierce evasion so 6 hunters do very well against you. Um, mages also do well because you can't dodge magic damage so they, if they get all their abilities off there's a good chance you're gonna die. And then 6 goblins for the same reason that 6 goblins beat the other comps they're just so tanky they have so much sustain that it's just so hard to kill them. 6 goblins actually pretty much ends up being the counter to most comps. Yeah, there's only like one comp or two comps that do very well against goblins. Alright, now we have uh, cave clan hunters and warrior hunters. Both of the builds are really strong. They're strong early, late, mid game. Like They're kind of like beast warrior. The only issue is that they really need specific, like the units are very specific that you need and you need to hit them really fast because if you fall behind as a hunter, you're gonna die. It feels so bad to play from behind as a hunter. It's best to like skip them if you're not doing that well that game. The counters to them would be nine warrior, so tanky. Um, yeah, the hunter can get dark spirit, so that that's a help. But if you can't get dark spirit, the nine warriors are probably gonna run you over. Six mages do well against you because they just blow you up so fast that so you have no chance of um, really reacting. Like with three mage, you can get marine bonus, but with six mage. It kind of, marine bonus really doesn't help and they just blow you up really fast. Surprisingly though, hunters do very well against god mage because sniper hits backline very well. So for god mage isn't under the same umbrella as the six mage because the six mage at least gets... The six mage just destroys so much of your magic resistance that they blow you up instantly while the god mage only has three mage. So you have a chance of surviving for a few rounds of, of skills. You actually can kill the god mage here and there. Um, the other thing is assassins. If you're a late game hunter and you have a lot of strong units, like say you already have sniper 3 and stuff, then if you frontline your sniper, then the assassins are going to jump for your backline units and you actually will win that, that fight. But between the mid game and if you don't get strong enough, assassins are a counter to you. They will beat you. Siren also helps rest the assassins, but if she doesn't have mana items, she's never getting off in time to help you. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Alright, now we have 3 mage. Three mage has a very strong mid game. They also have a lot of tech that unit tech, uh, units that they can tech in. They bring in a pirate captain, a werewolf for human bonus and CC. Um, they can add things like dark spirit. Like they have a lot more units that they can add, unlike the six mages. So it gives them a lot more time to get off a few casts of their abilities. So their mid game is very strong. Um, the issue is though they fall off late game because they don't have the six mage bonus. Especially if someone gets a marine bonus, you're pretty much done. So as, as you can see in the counters right away, marine. If you get marine bonus for stream mage, their damage is going to tickle. It's pretty funny actually. So until they buff mages again, pretty much if you tech in marine versus stream mage, you will win that fight most of the time. Um, and then I put beast warrior here because usually you can get marine bonus pretty easily in beast warrior because you have abyssal guard. Then you just throw in a siren and you just run them over pretty much. You can also beat them with uh, very tanky feathered because they just usually don't have enough damage to blow you up. But mid game, while people are still scaling, the three mages do a lot of damage. Something to watch out for. Now we have six mage. Now this is the stronger version. Um, they have a lot more AOE damage. They also have human silences still because they usually get pirate captains or tola stuff like that. The problem is that to get six mage now, you need God of Thunder. So unless they hit that legendary God of Thunder, they're not gonna scale beat you so it's pretty much the same issue as 3 mage. Um, the counters to the 6 mage would be assassins, uh, very tanky feather comps because they can soak up your first round of abilities and then crowd control. So 
if the enemy has like a storm shaman and it goes off first and then siren ult stuff like that you could potentially lose because of all that cc and they're gonna just run you over because you guys are really squishy you're pretty much six mages with like a pirate captain as a front line um marine bonus doesn't help though against six mage like six mage has so much magic spread that marine bonus doesn't help at all i even won four marine just to try and it still doesn't help at all all right, so next one, we got Assassins. Assassins are easy to play, strong in all stages, they do a lot, a lot of damage, they're easy to build, they stay level 8 usually, but the problem is, is crits are RNG, if they don't crit, they're gonna die. Um, if Assassins don't get good, like, attack items, they're probably not gonna be very strong, and then you also have to hit your 3-star Assassins. So, if you don't have, like, 3-star Shadowcrawler, 3-star Abyssal Crawler by late game, Assassins usually are very, very weak. The counters to them would be anything tanky, so knights do very well. Like knights are pretty much actually a true counter in a way, unless the assassins could get dark spirit or they're just insanely strong. Like three star shadow caller with just a bunch of items. Nine warrior does well for the same reason as knights, just very tanky. And then goblins. Goblins actually would be a true counter because no matter how strong your assassins are, the goblins are just so tanky and so strong that the you can't kill them. Like I had a super strong assassin comp. It's a super strong goblin comp, and there was nothing I could do. There's dark spirit wouldn't help. Nothing would help. You just dead. So that that this is actually one that has a true counter, which is goblins. But it has to be a late game goblins with warlocks. So six goblins with warlocks. All right, let's move on to knights. Um, knights are very tanky. They can one v one any comp pretty much, even goblins. Um, but they need to hit light blade three. They need to hit hell knight three. And if they don't have two stars mid game, they're gonna Take so much damage. Also, the issue of knights is that shields are RNG. There's a chance you're gonna get a shield. If you don't get a shield, that's the time when you're gonna die. So, but so I want to say is like, if knights get lots of shields and they're strong, there's no real counter to them. Like dark spirit helps, and then crowd control to let the dark spirit do her thing helps a lot. But usually, if it's a really late game knight comp and they have all their three stars and stuff. There's no counter. They're just, they're just gonna die. They're just gonna run you over. Like maybe six goblins has a good chance, but even then, if the knights get good shields and all that, like there's no counter. That's why their knights are very fun to play, and like a lot of people pick knights for that reason because they're just they just feel so strong late game if they actually get there. Now we have six goblins. Now six goblins are one of the strongest units early game and late game. Um, mid game they're really weak. They need something to help them mid game. Usually pick up people sorry, usually people pick up mages or assassins to help their mid game out. So you pick up three mage, three or three assassin, and that would help carry you until the late game when you get devastator, hopefully. Late game goblins though are pretty much the strongest comp. The only thing that beats them potentially is mages, six mage, specifically, or god mage. But you still actually can get big enough where the mages can't kill you. There's a chance because between warlock bonus, that you get two devastators, the mages might actually not have a chance to kill you still. So there's something to think about. But yeah, goblins are definitely the strongest, but they're the biggest gamble and hardest comp to pull off because of no devastator, no dice. That's pretty much all the strong comps that we have right now. They're not strong comps. That's pretty much most of the played comps right now. Their counters. I hope this video helped you. I know it's a little short, but. If there's any comp you want me to play to show you guys how it works, just let me know for the next video. But yeah, I hope this helps guys, and good luck.